Hi, my name is Dean Sickler and I'm the Commercial Education Specialist at Golden Paintworks. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the application of metallic texture using just a medium-sized trowel. Now the metallic texture itself comes in two bases, both a gold and a pearl base. Today I'm going to be working with a gold base doing a rather deep bronze color here. Now these, uh, the metallic texture comes in 20 standard colors here which can be made by your Golden Paintworks supplier, but you can generally match almost any paint color with these. Now it's highly recommended that you paint the wall surface first in a color that's compatible or very similar to your final metallic paint color because the metallic texture is uh, somewhat transparent and you can see the base color right through it. So unless you want to apply a very thick opaque first coat, paint your wall surface first. Now when I'm usually applying the metallic texture here and I come to a corner, I just like to work the plaster the texture very close to the corner and then work from the inside out like this. Just work it right around the corner. You can start like this and pull it in, but always finish going out. Also, I would recommend if you're right-handed to work from the left to the right. That way you can always start your stroke on the dry here and finish off your stroke by floating it off the surface. See like this, all different directions. This really helps out with the final finish because when you start, when you start applying the plaster and you start in the wet like this, it always leaves a, uh, what's called a strike mark or a straight line. Okay? But if you start out here and come in here and float, you'll leave a somewhat organic looking line which goes along with the actual finish. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And done. Okay, welcome back. Now the first coat is dried completely. It's been about two and a half hours. I did a fairly opaque and fat coat uh, to cover all the base coat here. Now is the time you want to address any problems you may see, any nail pops or long seams, maybe heavy ridge lines, something like that. You want to take just a small amount of the, of the texture here and just float it over it like this, making sure the edges feather off. Okay, now at this point I'm going to start up on the right and work my way left. I've dropped down to a smaller trowel now. Uh, this is to keep the movement tight and consistent across the whole wall surface. You could use a spatula like this also. The trick is to keep it somewhat uniform looking and consistent across the entire wall. So I'll start up here. Okay. Okay. And now you see the movement that I'm working, I'm using with this is fairly short strokes. I'm keeping them fairly random also. You want to avoid straight lines like this. If you do get a straight line, you want to come back the opposite way and stretch that out. Okay. Every time I land the blade, I'm always, it's always in movement also like this. That, that keeps me from leaving those straight lines. Okay, now I'll continue. Okay, before you move on too far, you may want to take your fairly, you know, take the material off your blade here and just go over some parts just to flatten it out. There, now let this dry for about, about an hour or so, and we'll come back and put on the final third coat. Okay, now the second coat is dry. I turned on an overhead light to look at it a little more closely on the shine, and honestly, it doesn't need a third coat. It's uh, pretty uniform, consistent all the way across the top. If you see any problems with it at this point, you can always just take a little bit of, a, of a texture here and just float over a patch that you may not like. It'll blend right in as long as you feather off the edges. And don't leave a big heavy patch on the wall.
Okay, now this is a nice washable surface.